Good evening. Good evening. I'm sure everybody's busy with the Thanksgiving and all your celebrations coming up tomorrow. And so we're just so thankful that so many of you have come to uh, take opportunity to thank the Lord for his many blessings, to be in his house, to hear his word, and to give him our thanks and praise for all that he does for us. So we welcome you tonight for our Thanksgiving Eve worship. Before we begin with our opening hymn, we'll take a few moments to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Before we begin with the singing of Gracious God, you send great blessings.
Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have thee. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you. To give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I am here. You may be seated. Old Testament reading for today comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, 
and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let your hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given to you. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. As you are able, I invite you to stand in reverence for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written according to St. Luke in the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem... Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they went back, and they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we welcome you this Thanksgiving Eve, as we turn back and give praise to God for all that he has done for us. 
Today's Holy Gospel, it's appointed for Thanksgiving Day, is a story, a true story, about ten lepers. Ten outcasts. Ten who are marginalized, isolated, separated, cut off from the people, from their families, their friends, and their communities because of their uncleanness, because of their illness, because of this leprosy, this bodily disease which they found themselves having. Now they were both unclean physically, but also because of their uncleanness physically, they were also unclean spiritually. They were even considered to be cursed by God because they had this illness, this bodily disease, leprosy. It made their skin scaly, gave them sores and ulcers and affected their nerve endings, did all kinds of really awful things to their bodies, and it was not a pretty sight. You didn't want to be caught near someone with leprosy for fear that you would get it yourself. So they were left isolated, outside of their families, their communities, basically homeless without anyone to take care of them, just kind of left to do and to care for themselves as best they could. No one else wanted to be around them. But Jesus, though, he's a little different. Jesus, the Son of God, cannot possibly be made unclean, even by touching or coming into contact with those things which are unclean. The sinless Son of God, perfectly, fully human, but also entirely God. So he, unlike so many others, reached out to these lepers, to these people who were sick, who were ill, who were in need. The Lord reached out to them. He heard them. He answers them in mercy. And so he heals all of them. He gives his blessings and saves every one of the ten lepers. And so the ten lepers, then they go their way. You know, Jesus says, show yourself to the priest, verify the healing that has occurred. You guys are all clean now. Things are good. Be restored to your communities, to your family of faith. Things were good for them because of Jesus and God's blessings to each of them. So Jesus says, go your way. They go their way and they show themselves to the priest, as Jesus says, but only one turns back. One turns back to give praise to God for what he had done for them. What about the nine? The nine did not. The one did, and oddly, surprisingly, it's the Samaritan who would have been surprised to have had any association with Jesus. Jesus was a Jew. They didn't get along, the Jews and Samaritans. So it was surprising that it's the Samaritan that gives praise and thanks to God and thanks Jesus falls at his feet, worships him for what he had done. And so Jesus responds then, We're not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has saved you. The thing about a good story is that, among other characteristics or qualities, a good story has characters with which we relate. So we can put ourselves into the story. How do we fit into the story? A good story has ways of doing that so that we can relate, so we can put ourselves into their shoes and really understand and empathize with what's going on. It applies then to us. So the question then is, which of the lepers are we? Are we the one? Are we the nine? Are we the one who returns to give praise to God, or are we the nine who do not? To which group do you relate, if any at all? Is it the one, or the nine, or maybe even all ten of them? Now, we don't have, at least I don't think we have, a skin disease like leprosy. We may have others, other illnesses that we face, but we aren't alike in the same way as the lepers and having that skin disease, leprosy. But we're really more alike than perhaps we might like to think. In the one place, we may not have this leprous disease, but we do have other bodily illnesses which really can cause serious harm and 
problems for us. Other things that can separate us, isolate us from our families, our communities, our family of faith here at church and otherwise. The last almost two years now with COVID-19, that's perhaps even a very stark and obvious example or comparison that we might make with the 10 lepers as many of us and our families have been isolated from one another, kept from one another, not able to go and do the things that we would like to be doing. And there's, of course, COVID, but there are other, other bodily illnesses that we face that we have to deal with as well. Then, of course, like the 10 lepers, all 10 of the lepers, by the way, we are by nature sinful and unclean. Just like the lepers were unclean, they too were sinners, they too were unclean because of their sin, likewise we also are in the same boat as they are. We, like the ten lepers, also cry out, Lord, have mercy. The ten lepers cry out, Eleazon, have mercy on us. And even we in the church today, don't we still continue that prayer so often in our churches? Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Kyrie eleison. And then, of course, also like the ten lepers, all ten, again, by the way, we also have much to be thankful for. We have much to give God thanks and praise for, even as those ten lepers did also. Our Lord says to us, didn't I make you? Didn't I create you with all creatures? Didn't I give you your body and soul, eyes and ears and all of your members, your reason and your strength and still preserve them? Don't I still take care of you? Haven't I given you your clothing, shoes, food and drink, house and home, land and animals, and all that we have. Our Lord says, don't I daily and richly provide you with all that you need to support your body and life? And don't I defend you against all danger and guard and protect you from all evil? And haven't I redeemed you? Haven't I redeemed you, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won you from all sins, from death and the power of the devil? not with gold or silver, but with my holy, precious blood given and shed for you on the cross, that you may be my own, that you may live under me in my kingdom and serve me in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as I am risen from the dead, living and reigning to all eternity. And our Lord also says, haven't I called you by the gospel, enlightened you with my gifts, sanctified and kept you in the true faith? Just as I call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify the whole Christian church on earth and keep it in the one true faith. In this Christian church, won't I daily and richly forgive all of your sins and the sins of all believers and raise you and all the dead, giving eternal life to you, and all who believe in Christ. And so, dear friends, which of the ten lepers, if any, which group do we relate? Which of the lepers are we? Are we the nine who who do not give thanks and praise to God for all of these great blessings? Or are we the one who returns and gives thanks and praise to God for all that he does for us? Do we live our lives unthankful for all of God's blessings, not taking the time, even daily or even minute by minute even sometimes as we need, to recognize and give thanks to God for what he has done and continues to do for us? Or do we turn back to give praise to him as he has done and continues to do so many things for us? So which are we, the one or the nine? Or are we the ten? Perhaps we might recognize that we're really more like all ten of the lepers than even just the one or the nine. Sometimes we do, sometimes we do turn back and give praise to God for what he does for us in our lives, and other times we don't. So perhaps we're really more like all ten of the lepers than just the one or the nine. After all, we are here, gathered here in God's house for worship. We are gathered here to give him our thanks and praise. And so we might ask then, where are the nine? Where are the rest of our our members of body of Christ here in this congregation? Where are the rest of our family of faith? So in that way, perhaps we could say we're like the one. 
but there are other times when we're not giving thanks to God, whether that be here in church or whether it just be in our day-to-day -day lives also. Sometimes we're more like the nine. Seems like we're really more like the ten than either one category or the other. But thankfully for us, as it was with the ten lepers, Jesus has mercy on all of us. The one, the nine, all ten. Our Lord has mercy upon all of them as he has upon all of us, whether we are the one or the nine or so as we just feel like all ten. Our Lord still forgives, he still heals, he still loves, he still has mercy, he still shows his compassion and kindness to us again and again in our lives, whether we are like the one who gives thanks or whether we're like the nine who many oftentimes don't. Jesus loves us. And that is why, whether we are thankful or not, he still has compassion and mercy, forgives us, loves us, heals us, does all things for us because he loves us. It was actually in our beginning of our reading, it says Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem. He was actually on the way to showing us just how much he does love us by going to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, of course, we recognize he was on his way to his cross. He was on his way to give his life as a ransom for many. For the one who gave thanks, for the nine who don't, for us here in this congregation, for those of us who aren't here tonight, our Lord was on his way to Jerusalem to give his life as a ransom for many, as a ransom for the sins of the whole world, all of us. Our Lord Jesus himself says, greater love has no one than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. This our Lord Jesus has done for us, for the one, for the nine, for us, giving his life because he loves us. By his death, by his sacrifice for us in our place, we are forgiven of all of our sins, including the times in which we fail to give God our thanks and praise. And by his resurrection, our Lord Jesus shows us the life that he came to give us. A life that is whole, a life that is healed, a life that is complete, that is perfect, that has everything, lacking nothing. All of these things we have, all of these blessings that we thank God for today, tomorrow, and every other day, is all because of the cross and the empty tomb. For with the cross and the empty tomb, our Lord Jesus has reconciled us to God restored us to a right relationship with him. And because this is true, God does give us every good thing. So like the ten lepers, God gives us many reasons to give thanks, all of which are in Christ. And of course, we recognize that here tonight, Thanksgiving Eve, we take the time to give our God our thanks and praise for what he does for us. But especially tomorrow, Day of Thanksgiving is a great time to do that, but we don't just do it today or tomorrow or the next day, but every day. Every day is another opportunity in which God gives us to give him our thanks and praise for all that he does do for us. As St. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so we do. We do give God our thanks and praise, even when our circumstances aren't always the most favorable. We still have a lot to thank our God for, even this year, even today, despite COVID-19 and other illnesses that we face, despite other challenges, despite other sins and failures on our part or others that have harmed us. We still have a lot to thank God for today. And so that's the question then. What do you have to be thankful for today or tomorrow or any other day? But here we are in the present. There's no better time than the present. So what about today? What about right now? Think about it. What are you thankful for today? Personally, I've got a lot of things, but among the top things are my family. Thankful for God, to God for my family. Um, I'm thankful to God for for you, this family of faith, for this call to serve as your pastor, I can't be more thankful to God for his 
his uh, role and his way of bringing us here and supplying and caring for my family, giving us, you all, a new family of faith to grow in our faith together with. I'm so thankful for all of you and all of those who do so much to support us in this congregation. I learned pretty quick, by the way, as a pastor, you, you figure out pretty quick that you can't do everything yourself. You always need somebody to, to make sure you get things done or to help you out with so many other things. So thankful to all of you that continue to, to help this church and this family of faith continue to, to grow and to flourish. Thank God for you. Of course, there are many other things to thank God for, but thankful most especially for Jesus, for his cross, for his empty tomb, for the things and the means by which God actually does give us all things. All things God does give us because of the cross, because of the empty tomb, God and man now reconciled in a right relationship once again because of Jesus, his cross and empty tomb and what he has done for us. And so the psalmist writes, and we continue to pray in the church as well, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And so we do. So we do tonight, we do tomorrow as you celebrate your Thanksgiving festivities and the good food and the good company and all that that you have yet to enjoy tomorrow. We give thanks to God in those things. And so in Jesus' name then we pray. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ unto life everlasting. Amen. This time in our service, we continue by serving the Lord with our offering. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. O Lord, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, 
may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Everyone have a blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us tonight for worship. Enjoy your families, your friends, your gatherings together, and God's blessings to every one of you.